Hello peoples, this is Chris aka Sonic 22 and welcome back to another episode of Rank Creepa Stories. Now today in Rank Creepa Stories we'll be looking at another creepypasta called Mr. Mix. So, well, let's just read it. Yeah. Does anyone remember an old PC game from the early 1990s called Mr. Mix? It's mainly a typing game, sim similar to Mario Teaches Typing, where you have to type words into a box to make a chef, the, t the titler Mr. Mix, put ingredients into a bowl. Unlike most typing games, however, this game is notorious for having an insane difficulty curve. The game has a word has a words per minute requirement for each level, being as low as 10 on level 10 on level 1 and as high as 85 on the third. By level 5, the requirement reaches over 500, effectively making it impossible to proceed any further. One of the main things that people noticed about this game is immediately was the background music. The music on the first level was an unsettling pattern of growls and progressively loud and and got, that got progressively louder as the level went on, often causing damage to early computer speakers and that were not designed to handle extremely high volumes of sound. The second layer had no music at all. The second level had no music at all, and the third had what sounded like an extremely low-quality recording of a hair dyer playing in the background. The remaining two levels had an extremely loud, high-pitched ringing throughout the level that caused severe eardrum damage to those who managed to get that far. Another rather disturbing aspect of the game was the design of Mr. Mix himself. He was a large, round-faced, overweight man with large, beady eyes and red spots on his cheeks. Most of who played the game reported having vivid nightmares of Mr. Mix speaking to them in a quiet, raspy voice and th threatening them to keep quiet about something. However, none of them could remember exactly what that was. One psychologist who saw many of these children reported being disturbed by a sheer amount of terror on the faces of the children as they recounted the details of the nightmare. Many of the children broke down into tears in the process, begging for their parents to save them. However, no direct, rea no direct relationship to the game itself could have determined these few cases, as not all the children suffered from the same ad adverse effects. For obvious reasons, the game did not sell very well. It remained in relative obscurity until a few years ago, when PC hackers got a hold of the ROM of the game and started digging through it. Using memory, ha using memory hacking software, they managed, crack they managed to crack the game's code and bypass the impossible fifth level. What they found, however, was extremely disturbing and caused many of them to quit the expedition altogether. According to the reports with these hackers left behind, the game behaves very strangely if the fifth level is bypassed. The game crashes violently and closes, writing a bunch of files to the user's system32 directory to the point that the RAM was almost completely filled. These files were reportedly pictures of people with horribly deformed faces, appearing to scream in pain and agony with their eyes appearing to bling for, from their ducts, from from their tear ducts and their outer layer skins torn uh, clean off in multiple places. If the user attempts to delete the files, the computer will violently crash and the blue crash and blue screen, causing permanent irreplaceable damage to the user's hard drive. The hackers found the found that this was caused by a lone byte in the game's ROM that triggered when the fifth level was completed. After removing this byte, they were able to proceed to the sixth and final level. Unfortunately, all the original hackers declined to discuss what they saw in the final level. All of them became extremely paranoid and reclusive, refusing to talk about anything related to the game and showing astonishingly extreme symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Most of, ceased, most of them ceased to be able to form coherent sentences within the week. Within a month, all of them went missing. All, of the, all remaining copies of the game were destroyed. To this day, no one knows what was the game, what was in the game that caused them so much psychological damage. Maybe it's better that way. Two years after this incident, a man was arrested for trying to kidnap an eight-year-old girl from a grocery store. Through DNA and fingerprint analysis, the man was the man was identified as one of the original hackers who viewed the final level of the game. He was wearing a white chef's hat and looked uh, and had a look of unspeakable malice and insanity on his face. When interrogated, the man will only say one thing. I'm Mr. Mix. Shh. So, this was Mixer Miss Creep Pasta. Now, what do I think about this Creep Pasta? Other than that, there are a few like cliches that are mostly present in most Creep Pastas in this, in this pasta. But other than that, they don't go like that too heavy on it. I mean, most of the Creep Pasta is actually really good. I mean, with Mr. Mix. I mean, Mr. Mix. I I recall was actually a real game. I'm not really sure because I heard this in a YouTube video somewhere from. Like I forgot who, but I remember I remember them recalling that Mr. Mix was an actual game, so I will give the reader props for that. But I'm not sure if it is because don't leave a lot of hateful cons because I'm not I'm not 100 sure it is, but that's why I heard. Probably they lied, but whatever. But but other than that, the game itself was actually seemed really well. How could I put like not that cliche? I mean, 
most video games will have blood popping up and everywhere like there will be anonymous music and while while the creepypasta did have the anonymous music part it didn't have too much blood and gore i mean there was that one part with like the, the foreign faces but that was the only part with the blood and gore i mean if the user went if the author went too overboard with the blood and gore i would have given this pasta a hard time but since they only included one scene with the blood and gore i i support this creepypasta i thought it was pretty good and with the hackers i mean normally with these creepypastas the people who were somewhat involved in the pasta would die these hackers however went missing and one of them was found to be mr mix but the only thing i question is that this guy was interrogated it's illegal to interrogate a person even if they committed assault that's illegal so that's one thing that kind of brought this creepypasta down in terms of realistic because interrogating a guy just for almost committing a child uh, robbery i mean he will be he will be put in jail but in terms of being interrogated no but other than that mr mix is a good creepypasta might have two cliches of uh, not two cliches a few cliches and the one moment that doesn't make complete sense but other than that it's still really good creepypasta might not be the best one out there but it's still really good i would recommend give this a read so guys if there's anything you would change the creepypasta leave in the comments below i will be sure to read them so guys if you like what you see here like comment subscribe do whatever, blah, do whatever you want and i'll see you guys next episode peace out peoples and bye bye